Now, uh, for the second question, we have uh, with us a distinguished personality. He had his MLIAC from Anamara University, MPhil from Aragata University, and PhD from Anna University, Chennai. To his credit, he has six national journals, five international journals, in which his papers are published, and he has published uh, 11 conference proceedings in the national level and three in the international level. And he has edited national level volumes of uh, five in number. He has served as PhD thesis examiner for Gandhigram Rural Institute, Bindakal, and he has conducted Viva Ose. And he has served as PhD thesis examiner for Bharatiya University, too, and uh, also Bharatiya University. He is the associate editor of of information management and technology. He is a resource person for SPSS software workshop and he is also a resource person for automation of libraries, installation of Koha and eSpace in schools and colleges. Now coming to his professional knowledge, he has knowledge in library automation with barcode and RFID technology. He has knowledge of customization of digital library with eSpace and Greenstone, knowledge of Koha, uh, something related with open source library management software. He is an expertise in uh, creating website using content management software. He has knowledge on e-learning software, knowledge of creating web log, and knowledge of installing RAM and XM server. Now, officers, it's none other than Dr. S. Balamurgan. Sir, welcome, sir. Welcome to this Google meeting. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, good evening, one and all. Uh, my name is Dr. Bala Murugan. Uh, I am from uh, Geetha University, Vishakhapatnam. I am the deputy librarian of Geetha University. So, it's a nice evening to meet one and all. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, I have to thank uh, Dr. Siva Panda. He is a very close friend of me. Uh, we are librarian VITAP. Uh, so, uh, today my presentation is on uh, E-content. Hello. Are you able to uh, able to yes, hear me? Yes. You are audible, sir. Uh, I'm audible. And uh, moreover, are you able to see my screen? Not yet, sir. One second. I'm just opening the things. Uh, now, are you able to see my screen? It to Hello. Be seen. It to yes. be no, sir. Not it. Not it. Please. Is it now? No, sir. Oh, what's the problem? One second. Please, please bear with me. I'll come back. It's okay, sir. Yes, sir. We are now seeing your slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now came. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So uh, I am audible also. No, no problem. No, no issues. No in problem. That. No, no problem. Okay. So shall I start now? Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. once again, uh, my thanks to the organizers and giving me an excellent opportunity for this presentation. So today my presentation is on e-content development and remote access. So I am I'm going to present how we have to develop the e-content. I think this is a right time and correct scenario. We are all uh, going behind the e-content development. And I think it is a very long back we have developed the e-content. And now it is getting so popularized because of the pandemic situation. So I'm going to give you the uh, 
uh, detail how we can develop a e content i think most of the people we are already having the experience of e content developments uh, being a librarian so what we call as e content it may be a, a born digital or uh, it may be a created digitally these are the e contents what we are following what we are having present now i mean to say e journal e books and what is there in anything in electronic format we will call it as a e content and e learning and e content both are inseparable words we can't differentiate between the e learning and e content but even though there is some difference in the e learning and e content e learning is the use of technology which enables the people to learn anything and they can read anything anywhere any time so it the electronically it is supporting the learning process and as well as the teaching process so due to the growth of this multimedia technologies and the internet uh, so everything has developed the changed the face of learning and e content development earlier people won't think about the e content development now it is a right time we are all looking behind the e content development so e content is providing creating and distributing the information which is in a digital form which can be seen on a screen it may be a book i think it, it is a e book or e journal whatever may be we are putting in the e form that is called as the e content it a uh, e content is well designed now the technology is improving the platform that is a programming platform it becomes robust now so they are implementing new programming techniques uh, even interactive learning also introduced so they are all well versed in creating the e content and e learning so now e learning is slowly occupying the conventional classroom i am not denying classroom is very much important because the teacher mentoring is most important for a student but the e learning and the e content developments na that is the support for the students to improve their knowledge so the uh, as a regular classroom the student is timing is limited he can contact the teacher in a limited timing and a limited time only he can get his queries and everything now this e content platform provides a platform so he can take the notes he can go for the classroom at any time anywhere in by using any platform it, it is not meant uh, we have to have a computer laptop or this even a mobile is also enough so in that way the e learning and the development of e content is uh, moving on and uh, let me compare with this uh, lms and the cms what is the lms learning management system and the cms some people will call it as course management system content management management system like that so whatever may be cms deals with the content that is a course management system some uh, some people they will call it as a content management system it depends upon the perspectives but there is a difference between learning management system versus the computer management system both are working on the platform web platform only they are all web based platforms it is working on the thing but there are some difference in a learning management system in learning management system we used to plan our courses periodically week wise daily wise so for example i need to say moodle you know about moodle in moodle now we have to plan our courses we have to collect the material so here we need the students they have to participate in a particular timing and they can go through the courses they will be given with uh, what we call our uh, uh, blogging like that they have to interactive sessions will be there that is continuously it will be going on in lms so lms is to deliver the lecture and then there needs a monitoring of the learners as well as the accessing the learners i mean to say there there are there are some quiz programs will be conducted by using the lms and they will have the uh, what is called wikis and they, each of the participants they can themselves for contact with each other and they will do the things so this is a regular class mode, class mode that is like a class type so they have attend their classes online regularly it is the type of uh, in like with the 
face to face classroom so that is the lms but then comes the point of cms course management system or content management system what is the cms what is the difference between lms and the cms regarding the course materials what are, what what is need what are the materials need for the particular course see in engineering background the student will have a some subject for that subject there will be a lot of curriculum will be there based on the each subject areas based on the each topic of the subject they will develop a course material lecture materials even online link to the other resources everything will be developed by the teacher and they will make it permanently available in a system that is called a content management system in some other context they are saying as a course management system so whatever may be it is a platform to store what are the things in that one so any any material any type of material it is not uh, limited to text uh, like that it audio it can be an video it may be an animated thing all this one they can store in a content management system there comes the difference between the learning management system and the content management system here there is no monitoring of the students to uh, what do you say to access the performance of the student whether he is attending the class uh, submitting the assignments uh, all this one it is not there simply we are putting all the course materials bring together and putting in a platform that's called the content management system so the student he can take this content from any place wherever he want at any time so what are the various components of e, e contents what i said earlier it may be a text it may be a visuals there are a lot of animations are there graphics are there all are the contents e journals e books what are the databases even the presentations of the class presentation there are some universities they are having a practice of putting all their lecture notes and the teacher na he has to deposit the presentation in a platform so at any point any time whenever a student is getting the doubt night 9 o'clock 10 o'clock he can easily go through the cms and he will get download the presentation and lectures and he can clarify the doubts this is the content of your uh, e content forms various forms we are keeping in the internet there are some companies are there they are providing the animated videos and i think most of you know there are so many animated videos are available so these can be provided a link then we have a lot of materials available in youtube that also be given a link also we can create our own videos see for example we are conducting a lab of a particular subject that lab can be the entire process of the lab can be captured in a uh, video and it is posted in our content management system so whenever any uh, any student he was not able to attend the class due to various reasons or not able to attend the lab he can have a look of that particular lab and he can go through the entire process so if anything he forget in the middle now he can go through the entire video of that lab video and he can get an uh, experience with the videos so so these are the various forms of e contents then what are the types of e content so one is the in house the developer e content then another one part is the proprietary e content so uh, what i mentioned e journal e books animated videos so what we get it from outside then lectures animated lab experiments i said no? and uh, lectures uh, already pre prepared lectures are available there are some companies they are providing the animated lab experiments also these type of contents what is electronic contents those are purchased from outside and hosted those are called as the proprietary ones what is the in, in house developer our lecture notes prepared by our faculties what is the our presentations tutorial materials of your particular uh, courses and course materials then lecture videos like nptel videos so nptel of course it is another thing we can also go for the nptel and what you are posting your lab manuals lab manuals quizzes 
and the question and answers prepared by our faculties and we are putting in our content management with the key so that is most important with the key we have to put it up so these are the contents types of content we can host it in our cms so it can be seen by our student at any point of time whenever they are getting any doubts the concept of e content is classroom anywhere any time i think this is a very popular now it is getting very popular because of the pandemic situation and the technology is developing so much and they are inventing the new things so many tools also available to provide a web based applications then comes the there are some platforms which are providing interactive applications also available for the students with the instructor so that can be used very well so this in shortly we'll call it as a classroom anywhere any time so once the course contents are digitized and put it in a content management that can be used by our researcher then our student anywhere in any platform at any time so this is the main Uh, what is the underlying te uh, underlying technology underlying concept in the classroom anywhere any time then what are the benefits of the e contents we know very well i am uh, from starting onwards and talking about the same thing only uh, we can access the content any time that but most important thing multiple access so many student at any point of time they can access i mean to say concurrent access and it will so providing the search button also that the search boxes will be there so they can go for a particular topic word by word it is indexed so they can search by the word by word so it is a ease of search then it is having the mixer media content i mean to say for a lecture for a particular topic in a curriculum they used to provide even audio animated audios videos everything can be done even the teacher can record his voice especially with audios and they will put a link on that one so that will be useful they can hear the voice of their instructors to see uh, and they can see the videos also so these are the things we can and it is easily downloadable Uh, it, again the download part uh, it is it depends upon the content management system what we are developing so we want to read everything on the screen only we are avoiding the downloads means uh, we can avoid the downloads otherwise we will give a download option for certain materials only to prevent uh, the copyright things so because it is our own content it may be downloaded by someone uh, somebody is and maybe misused so we can give you some limitations in the download there comes the storage part and it provides a quick reference then what is called the precision location of the content what i said earlier then uh, all the words of the e contents uh, will be indexed it depends upon again it depends upon the software where what we are trying to use we want to index all the words of that one to provide a quick access or the how many time it is occurred to pinpoint and to find out the exact content so it is also possible through the precision recall then topic wise access then another one important thing it is reusability reusability means not from the student point they can also reuse and uh, from the instructor point a yeah, instructor he want to develop the content because uh, every 3 years to 2 years uh, and the syllabus will change so they need to revamp the entire uh, uh, content they want to make it uh, somewhat advanced or some new topics is introduced so the same thing same slides they can download and they can use it in a uh they will edit the contents and they can change it and they will use it in a different pattern the presentation will be a different, uh, different pattern so that there comes the use of reusability and let me confer uh, i already said it is a very old technology uh, late 2000 itself at uh, early 2000 itself it has been started and now it is picking up and everybody is throwing light on the e content development e resource management all these things are coming out 
and these are the so our in india there are so many initiatives were taken by the hmrb and one of the thing is uh, nptl i think most of people see you know about the nptl so it is developed by all the iits and iits so the contents are available in the iit madras so you have to give your hard disk i think right now they are providing 60 bits of content is available so you can download the nptl in your local server you can maintain as a separate server also or you can give you you can get all the contents from your external hard disk they will copy the contents and they will give it to you if you give the uh, hard disk to iit madras means na they will copy all the nptl lectures even lecture notes also they are giving everything web courses everything so we have to host the contents so it is our own server we can maintain our own server and we can provide the contents it is not necessary we have to download from nptl site because it is available in nptl site also but due to the what is called our internet is slow all these things some problems will be occur in downloading so we can host ourselves then i talk about this virtual lab these labs you know they are providing the experiments what is available the experiments that is a very popular experiments are available those experiments uh, this chemistry experiments physics experiments are available in that one we need to purchase those things and we can give you a link for those this is called the virtual lab then e yantra engaging the students for math and computer science then our infinitnet is providing the access for various e journals under ugc infonet project so we are getting the free access of all the e journals this askar plus plus all these things na they are providing the college level school level they are providing the e contents these are the projects various projects and still it is there is a continuation in that one i'll come to that one and you know now the word swayam it is also a type of uh, e content only they are conducting the courses in engineering and that thing and i think recently swayam prabha is introduced and they what they are doing now they are taking the university syllabus it is your uh, wish only if you are working in a university means now according to your university syllabus you have to prepare a lecture but for the undergraduate student it should be a recognized university recognized by utc so you have to prepare a lecture on your own university syllabus itself and you there are certain criteria are there if you go to swayam prabha website means they have given multiple uh, criteria to develop with their e content so you develop the your own video lectures with materials and you have submitted to swayam prabha means those things will be broadcasted to a through a tv channel i think some 75 channels or something it is coming out under swayam prabha they are having a detailed um, sessions when it is going to be and they are having it on various subject areas also environmental science science but mostly they are covering the science subject also then they have given this schedule timing also so there not that videos can be scheduled this can be done by any teacher those who are having good capability they are working in the universities and they are fixing some criteria also if you are uh, stick on to uh, criteria you prepare and the quality is very good means definitely it was broadcasted one of our professor who is working in uh, geetam university he has presented in the swayam prabha and then uh, spoken tutorial you know about uh, spoken tutorial it is the initiative of mhrd and iit bombay they are having the uh, complete post by the iit bombay they have made some uh, regional centers they have made the universities uh, in your areas they have made it as a contact point and they used to regularly conduct the programs in various discipline like uh, programming in python c programming they are covering so many contents are available and one more thing what i am telling na these contents are available free these videos and uh, lecture notes i think most of you come across in youtube also it is available free in uh, 
spoken tutorial website you can download those things and you can create you can create an index for all the spoken tutorials and you can host in your university or colleges and you can give you a link for that one so that is also there that, these are the initiatives then a very big initiative is latest is uh, national digital library for, by iit gerakpur then e patasala these are the initiatives taken by our government so i think most of the people are aware of all these things and only thing these videos all this thing we can download and we will put it in our library in a separate uh, separate server we can create a server not an issue we can create a server and we can create an index for all these things simply by using a Uh, PHP program, we can create a index, and it, we can make it as a searchable content. So it will be circulated within the library or within the campus itself. Don't need to give it outside also. If you want, then we can make it outside also. If you are having a server capacity and you are having you have a very big domain capacity, means that you can make it outside also. That can be easily done by the librarians or other initiative people. then what are the e content initiatives worldwide i think mit open courses it is very popular uh, only thing in mit courses uh, these are based on the foreign countries uh, i mean to say their university standards only so we have to pick the courses according to our needs in the in context with the indian needs so we can have the courses and we can they are they are providing even lecture notes also lecture notes is available plus lecture ppt is also available and this is available here uh, free of cost only we can download what i have mentioned here everything is available as a free of cost hardware open course stanford university courses university of michigan then to tokyo open courses this especially this engineering video lectures this is very popular it is very very useful for our students almost it is like our indian syllabus only it is on par with our indian syllabus so it is very useful for our students these are all available free of cost it won't come under you uh, because being a library so it if, it, if you are posting in library i think uh, you won't get into any ipr copyright problems so otherwise we can provide a link to our students through a content management system these are the e initiatives e content initiatives taken worldwide so i think i have given enough stuff on e content so let us move for the next thing now comes the point so you want to create a e content so what are the guidelines because you need to submit any e content for one of the initiatives what i told uh, swayam uh, swayam prabha for so our ugc has laid some uh, guidelines according to that guidelines we have to prepare the and so main thing is the objectives of the course so based on which syllabus uh, based on what content you are going to give and based on that one who is the target audience all these one you have to mention what is the objective of the course then comes the in the content design i used to say one thing because i have not mentioned here what is the content design in content design uh, so there are some more technological things are there uh, the camera and uh, double camera technology like that it is there single camera means the class you were uh, like a lecture like that so the camera will be focused you only so continuously like a classroom you can uh, take a class dual camera technology is there uh, nothing but we uh, we are focusing on the board also that the white board uh, like that they are taking it so they will mix both the things so there are some software are available and then and it will be given in a presentable format so their the content this that is most important some other technologies are there also then uh, subject mapping that is also most important it has to be more mapped with some of the available uh, what do you mean to say available syllabus content it should not cover the uh, i mean to say whether it is a targeted to a undergraduate student or postgraduate student like that it should have the mapping 
then the text then finally you have to give the case study materials and if you are having any audio on the video means now you can give the audio on the video or otherwise you can provide a link to the audio so i mean to say other resources not from your time same other resources are available in different platforms so we can give you audio and video also and for this one the learning assignments the students they can submit some assignments quiz programs links to the other resources or they can give the downloads also the entire ppt subject contents those things can be downloaded they can provide a download links also these are the major guidelines it is given by the ugc i think there are there is a report if you just to google it means that you will get a uh, ugc guidelines report it is uh, somewhere around 40 to 50 pages it is coming out they have given elaborately they have given the what are the things has to be done what are the initiatives has to be done if you want to develop your e content e resources then we come to the authoring standards this is a very most, but I think SPORM is a very, very popular than ADL, AASL. These are the international standards. These are our very, very popular standards. We have to follow all these ones. There is, if you put the SPORM, means you will came to know what are the uh, things we have to follow. This is SPORM. And if you want to implement this forum and as per this forum we want to develop means that this is standards what is the those standards those are all available even microsoft also providing this lrm learning management system it is available there and these are the uh, authoring standards we have to follow any one of the standards again it is coming to the uh, point of for whom you are preparing this e content either for nptl or uh, some other swayam all these things and then uh, spoken tutorial they have, they are having their own standards they are following their own standards so it has to be in their teaching pedagogy it could on par with the teaching pedagogy so uh, depends of uh, depends on that one everybody is having their separate standards so these things you will get it in their uh, website itself and you have your contact means that they will give the uh, standards on par with the standards you have to uh, create your e contents then we comes to the open source tools these are the popular open source tools. I think course lab is very popular and this labs learning activity management system. These are very, very popular tools that can be used for now, some other tools also available. I think proprietary tools also available, but I have focused only on uh, open source tools, so what is available. So being a teacher, he can't spend so much of it. If the university is providing a tool, that is a different thing. Even our Gita University, we are having, we have purchased the Coursera. So our uh, people were provided with the Coursera and they have provided in our Gita, they have provided a training how to develop your content. We are having Coursera, which is, and we have a separate learning management uh, portal also. So any teacher in our Gita, they have to create for uh, particular subjects. Every teacher is allocated with a subject. So they have to create the e-content for the subjects according to our syllabus. And everything is posted in the Coursera platform. So Coursera means we have to spend the amount and it has to be purchased by the universities or colleges and they have to post the content. I think you may know about Harappa Learning. There is a company called Harappa Learning they are providing the uh, what do you mean they are providing training to the teachers training to our instructors how to develop the uh, courses that mean uh, e contents e resources how we have to develop these are all available and they are providing the training but again it comes to a paid training nowadays a lot of uh, webinars also they are conducting but it is a paid training. If your university is ready to host those things, means you, know, you can purchase a Coursera, a Coursera and this Harappa learning, they are providing the training how to develop the e-content. This is also available. So these are some of the open source tools. If a teacher wants to make it of themselves, 
no, not depending upon the uh, university working. If they want to develop their own, own course content mixer, uh, these are the things that they can make it up. And then comes the real challenges and issues. There are so many challenges needs to be faced. I think most of the people you may know about a lot of information. This information is a lot of in this information age a lot of info available but only thing we are unable to uh, what do you say uncoordinated information it is not having coordination today i am having some information i am simply putting a creating a blog and i and there is no right information is available now it becomes an information it happened so many is coming out from the information so there is a demand now adequate and what is the needed audited information is not available then another thing now only we are coming to the age of preparing the e-content e-resources so even our uh, instructors also it is new for our instructors for our teachers to develop the e-contents so they need a training that that is only i said lack of formal training in teacher and how to use the uh teaching aids nowadays we come across only the chalk and talk method otherwise maximum will prepare a ppt and give you a talk on that one but that won't fulfill the needs of a student now that students are becoming more tech savvy they need animator contents they need a video on that one they need a proof proof for everything they want to see the things and moreover if you uh, prepare anything simply giving an audio is uh, not enough we have to give the video of the things if, if you see then only it will get to get into you a movie is more uh, eye-catching he can remember uh, we are having a student uh, who is uh, seeing a movie now uh, he can remember that movie forever in his lifetime why because of uh, the video eye-catching video what they are providing in the movies like that the lectures should be in a eye-catching manner so for that one our teachers need a proper training i said uh, harappa training or we have a lot of peoples are available in this field so they have to technology oriented technology oriented teaching has to be given technology oriented training has to be given and uh, creating this expertise technical skill it is uh, okay then uh, course material sometimes uh, they are preparing the course material due to incompatibility uh, usually we need to change our course material then and now based on the uh, changes what is happening in the courses these are the things then uh, the students need a relevant uh, knowledge how to use these technologies See, simply surfing through the net is different, but for a technical thing means that he needs that platform. These are the things are the challenges and the issues. So I think I have given uh, enough stuff on uh, e-content management, how to develop the e-content. Then comes to the remote access. Okay, now we are ready with the content, all everything we have followed, all the things, what are the guidelines, everything we have made. We have enough video, audio, animator contents, everything. So how to make the access? Uh, Nimbus. Nimbus is providing, I, I mean to say these are all the remote access, which is for providing e-journal, e-things. I'm not talking about our own created contents. Our own created contents means na, you have to have a platform like Coursera, or if you are having a good uh, IT department and a service providing department, you can create a, your own content management system and you have to host all your content and made it available. No need to depend on all these numbers and everybody. These are all paid things and they will provide only for the proprietary things. First I said it is in-house developer or outside purchase one. They will, these numbers, remote access, open ethans, everybody will provide the service only for the predefined content of e-journal and e-books. But what, what is the fate of your internal in-house in developer content. 
for that only you need to develop your e content in your university or Pauna, you have to make your own e content or a lot of e content platforms are available now i said for example coursera so you can put all your in-house developer materials in that one and it is made available through this easy proxy or my make me taking this ldap technology can be used and we can provide it if you are student and staff everybody will be provided with a unique identification number i mean to say a unique id with a password for your access means now you can directly give the access to your servers to your users so it is an authenticated access only you can have the control over the number of accesses so you can provide your remote access also through your servers so there are a lot of technologies are available and uh, this nimbus and everything why i'm mentioning this nimbus and everything right it can be provided through our uh what are the contents we are purchasing i mean to say e general all these things and if you have the easy proxy means not that you are well in fine you can keep it in your university and you can post the things from your side itself so these are the things for the remote access and for a teacher to make it very simple very simple no need of all this technology to spend all these things and a teacher can develop your own blog simply blog and google is providing a lot of facility for that one they can develop a web blog and and they can also develop by using google sites so any teacher without spending anything they can post their videos materials in order with their syllabus according to their curriculum they can give you a link by using this blog and by using the google sites because now the blog is not having the uh, you can't store anything in the, just you can give you a link in that one so if you are having a gmail means now there is a lot of uh, cloud spaces available uh, so you can put all the materials and give you a link in that one google drive you have a, you can store up to 2 gb 10 gb is also available if you want now you can purchase and you can use it off and the pcloud is very popular they are having they are providing a storage facility straight away for 5 gb and if you introduce some people so you can if they are uh, uh, installing the pcloud means that they will give uh, your content uh, that is i mean your uh, uh, storage space will increase up to 15 gb so you can store all your materials in that one and simply create a blog give you a link for all the content and you can happily give it to all your students at any time anywhere any classroom at anywhere anytime that concept can be managed no need to go for all these things if you are having a backup of the university or colleges we can go for all these things and we can post all these things otherwise we can do it through all those things so at the end of the, i think uh, this is my last slide what you are going to back for your home so this technology these tools all this one is a uh, supporting platform for the education nobody can replace your this is a, my conclusion is nobody can replace a teacher e-learning is well suited for your flexible learning and digital learning and their contents can be accessed anytime, anywhere. But face-to-face uh, -face teaching and uh, what you say, uh, being a teacher as a mentor, uh, this mentoring the students, uh, those things uh, cannot be matched with this e-content development. This e-content development or e-content can be used uh, along with our regular teaching. It will help to enhance the teaching methodology and the teaching uh, materials can be given for the students. They can use it whenever they need that type of support only this technology will provide. But nobody can replace a teacher and this mentoring face to face technology face to face that cannot be comparable with any technology. A teacher is a lead and a guide is a mentor for the student. Their, their role cannot be uh, 
uh, replaced with these technologies. All these technologies are helping the teacher or helping the students to move further and enhance the uh, learning things. And it is used for learning management. Learning management only, it will be very useful. So my, as far my concern, a teacher never be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank Love. you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, that was such an extensive session, bombarded with information. Thank you so much. And we have got a couple Thank of you, queries in the chat box, sir. Yeah. Thank you, so, uh, Dr. Shiva Prasad has said, if anyone want to learn Koha, spoken tutorial helps a lot. And Shiva has a doubt, sir. He asks you if we can share the materials of IGNO through our website without Forming to ignore, then will any problem arise about copyright? And he has also added, if we share it with the proper of that material. Uh, I think the ignore materials you can't do it, sir, because it is more or less a proprietary like content. But if you share the NPTEL materials, means that it is not uh, violating the copyright things. So ignore, ignore material is a proprietary content, but they are having one more platform also. You can give you a link to the material. You can give you a link. They have created a platform to host all the distance learning materials. So that can be used. You can give you a link, but you should not download and post it in your uh, website. That is a copyright violation. OK, so Hello. Okay. And uh, now there is a. A compliment from uh, Anuradha Seth telling, this is the best lecture till date. Got awareness on how the digital revolution has led to create, deliver, and monitor the learner and assess the learner's performance. Yes, and, uh, another I... compliment from... Thank you. Another compliment from Abhay Kumar Parma telling, e content is very useful for our researchers and students. And uh, yes. has complimented telling, rich informative presentation. Now, there is a request from Dr. Siva Prasad telling, uh, Thank you. I request the organizers to arrange an online workshop how to develop the e-content. It is today's high item. Hmm. Everybody should know about it. Uh, a good request, sir. A good suggestion. Yes, sir. That only I said. Yes, sir, please. Uh, that only I said. Now, e-content e development, uh, uh, what I told now, this the course around all these things, now, you have to spend a lot of amount lot of amount you have to spend it should be affordable but the teacher should not be affordable that much should not need to spend so instead of that one what i said na, this uh, contents and everything you can develop and you made it according to some of the syllabus you keep your syllabus as a guideline and you get it from your teacher and just to host it in some of our cloud platform give you a link to the materials by using a blog or google site so that is more meaningful and i think it is a cost effective also hello oh, okay sir thank you sir and uh, there are quite a lot of compliments from uh, oh, okay. Lalita, Lalita, anita sharma everyone are telling that it's very informative uh, and uh, another uh, babita telling it's nice presentation and Abhay Kumar says, digital library software is required for e-content. And uh, Dr. Bubendra Bansot says, you are right, sir, to replace the teacher. Teachers have to learn the technology. And uh, a couple of words from uh, Sasikala. Sure. Very useful and comprehensive coverage, Dr. Balamur. Okay. And uh, there is another compliment from uh, Ms. Sonika. Very well explained, and it is the need of Nice lecture from Namdeo and uh, Prabha tells, yes sir, we need a workshop. And Dr. Shiva Prasad tells, this pandemic makes the teacher technology savvy and everybody know how to develop an e-content. And there's uh, some words from Anuradha Seth telling, one more lecture is requested, focusing how to use MOOC platform. And uh, Ms. Noor Jahan says, how uh, there is a question, sir. How to upload our e-content on Coursera platform? Please share more details. Uh, 
Oh, sure, sure, sure. This Coursera, um, I think I have not used that one to be honestly saying. Uh, my teachers are having, I, I think I have little knowledge in the Coursera, but definitely I will come back to you. So if you need anything, means now, please uh, send an email to me. Uh, I'm sorry I have not uh, mentioned there. My email is deputy librarian at geetam.edu. Deputy librarian at Geetam, G I T A M, Geetam.edu. So uh, this is the mail, or if you Google through our website, you will get, you can see my name, and there is a uh, email also there, librarian at Geetam.edu. So you, you can drop me a mail. So whatever I'm having the knowledge, I will share with you. And again, uh, I want to say something regarding this MOOC. What you said. again? Uh, there is a misunderstanding with uh, LMS and CMS. MOOC is a learning management system. Mm -hmm. So we can provide all these things, and we need uh, interaction of the students also. Otherwise, uh, simply we can use it as a thing. No problem. No issue in that one. Uh, anything, sir? Please. Uh, that was so nice of you, sir, to share your email ID. And uh, dear participants, any more questions and queries can be po posted in the chat box. Hello, I'm not getting your voice is breaking, please. Sir, I don't think there are more queries. Uh, dear participants, if you have queries or questions, you can post them in the chat box. Hope that's all uh, from their end, sir. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Once again, uh, I thank all the participants for uh, hearing my lecture. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, comments also. And uh, if you need any information regarding these things, means you, know, you please drop your mail. So uh, if time permits, definitely I will uh, give you a feedback to you and I will share my knowledge with you. Thank you. So all. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having uh, shared knowledge uh, for okay. developing the e-content and uh, other platforms. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and you.